So uh, I'm talking about the robot command line tool today, and I'm talking about how um, we can use the, the tool for automating ontology mapping workflows. So uh, for those of you who haven't used robot before, um, it is a command line tool for ontology development, and it's based on an open source Java library. Uh, robot was developed for use with OGO ontologies, but it can be used with any ontology file in the supported formats. And those supported formats include RDFXML, Turtle, Manchester, and many more. Uh, many OBO developers use the command line version of Robot in their ontology build pipelines. And this is usually orchestrated by something called uh, make. So you'll see make files in a lot of the, the repositories. Um, Robot itself includes 26 commands for working with ontologies. And I'd love to go over all of these today. Unfortunately, we, we don't have time for that. Um, but just a couple of these include annotate, which you can use to add metadata to your ontology. So this includes things like the ontology IRI, a version IRI, and other annotations like maybe a title, a license, a description. Um, the query command, which is used to run Sparkle queries over an ontology. Uh, the report command, which runs a series of standardized quality control checks over the ontology, and of course, many more. You can find a complete list of the robot commands at the link at the bottom of the slide, which has all the robot documentation, robot.obolibrary.org. Pretty easy. So for today's talk, I just want to go over a simple workflow, a simple and general workflow that you could use for mapping ontologies with robot. Uh, so each of these is the name of a robot command. And in order, this workflow could be uh, using template to create the axioms linking the ontology terms, then using extract to create a module of the uh, external terms you used. And then finally using merge to merge those external terms into your ontology file with the linking axioms. Uh, and I will go over each of these commands in a little bit more detail. Uh, to kind of explain this workflow, I want to talk about a project that I was involved with starting in 2018. So in 2018, uh, the evidence and conclusion eco developers used a similar workflow to enrich eco with logic from the ontology for biomedical investigations, OB. <clears throat> so OB is very rich in logical definitions. So we really wanted to harness what th the work they've already done to enrich eco. Now, there are no exact matches between ECO and OB. OB is talking about the assays, um, the study designs, the, the actual processes, whereas ECO talks about the evidence that comes from these. Um, so we created design patterns to link various OB modules to evidence terms. Uh, and Nicole and Sue yesterday covered some really great reasons to use design patterns. Uh, it, it, they're really easy to reuse. They create a standard uh, pattern. Um, and from these patterns we created, we, we made robot templates from these. So robot template, what is it? Um, each template is a CSV or a TSV table. Uh, so it's, it's just a spreadsheet and it, each one has three parts. So it has a header, which is the first row. And these are the, the human readable names for each column. Uh, the second row is going to be your template strings. So these are the standard patterns that tell robot how to create axioms from the cell values. And then your last row, or the, all of the following rows, are going to be your data rows. Uh, and each row corresponds to one ontology entity uh, where the cell values are used to create axioms. So these templates, uh, the template strings can be used to add either annotations or logic to a term based on what pattern is followed. Uh, I, I'd love to go into a lot of detail about template because I actually love talking about robot templates, um, but we don't have a ton of time. So just as a quick and general overview, uh, the template strings that be begin with the letter A add annotations and template strings that begin with the letter C add class expressions. Uh, and we're going to see an example of a template in just a second. So this hopefully will make a little bit more sense. There are also some special keywords for the terms ID, label, and more. 
Uh, and again, more details on template strings, including how to add axioms to properties and individuals can be found in the documentation. Uh, so that, that, that's that same link, robot.obolibrary.org. So here's just the, the first three rows of the eco OB template. Um, so you can see in the first row, we have our, our headers, the human readable headers. The second row is our robots uh, strings. So the eco OB template used these C template strings, the ones that start with the, the letter C here, to create anonymous class expressions to, to link the OB terms to eco. And for these template strings, robot simply substitutes the cell value into the percent sign in the Manchester expression. So, so you can see here, we have this, this percent sign here. So for this axiom process would be substituted. And then you can see experimental evidence is about some process. Um, and this is added as a super class of this target class. Equivalent and disjoint classes can also be created, but again, we, we don't have time to go over those today, unfortunately. So once we created these templates and filled them out, linking um, many eco terms to OB terms, we also used some gene ontology terms. Um, once we filled out the template, we extracted the necessary terms from OB and Go into small modules. And these modules are included as imports in the eco edit file. Uh, we used robots extract command to do this. Uh, and this command accepts one or more term IDs and an input ontology file to produce an output file containing only the module for those terms based on the given extraction method. So we have a couple of different supported extraction methods. These include Myriot and SLME methods of extraction. Uh, Myriot is going to be just the minimum information you need. So it's going to be the, the class hierarchy um, and the term annotations, whereas SLME is going to include more logic. And full documentation can be found at the link here, um, robot.library.org slash extract. So to put it all together, um, we since we used uh, labels in the template that, that you saw here, instead of using term IDs, um, and we needed the term IDs for, for the list for extract, we did write a custom Python script to get these term IDs from the labels in the template. Um, and then after that, we ran extract using SLME to produce the modules. And we used SLME because we wanted that logic from OB. Uh, finally, we ran the template command to create another small module containing the axioms which linked eco and OB together. And we also included that as an import to the eco edit file. And then the last step uh, during the, the automated eco release process, we used the robot merge command, which combines the, the imports into one product. So there's no imports to load. Everything is contained in one ontology file. So all of these commands were added to our make file, uh, which includes Eco's automated release process. So each time we run the release, we can also refresh our imports to make sure we have the most up-to-date version of these ontologies um, and that, that they're always included in the monthly releases. So doing this all automatically really gives the Eco developers more of a chance to focus on the logic and making sure the, the logical definitions in these templates are accurate um, and they, they really cover the full domain. So um, using make files is great. You have to just enter one command and everything runs very quickly. So now um, we have time, I think, for a couple of questions. I know, I know we, started, we started a little bit early, so I'm ending a little bit early. Um, so no worries. I have some questions for you. Uh, I use robot. Uh, and um, one of the things that uh, I find uh, very useful is, is the templates that are very flexible. Mm -hmm. So um, yesterday we talked about, um, all right, uh, I have another question, but um, yesterday we talked about um, mappings and you mentioned the mappings here as well. And we talked about, um, uh, having some um, ready to use uh, patterns uh, 
to map. So, you know, there's a DOS DPs. Um, so how, how does robot work with them? Is there a, is a workflow um, geared towards that or is that still in the works? It is, uh, are, are you asking like, it, is the workflow integrated with DOS DP templates? Okay. So, so robot templates and DOS DP templates, um, they, they kind of accomplish the same thing in, in different ways. And Nicole and Sue talked about how they use DOS DT, DP templates yesterday. Um, so, so DOS DP templates are in YAML format, robot templates are in this table format. Um, so, so you can really use them both to, to generate ontology axioms using design patterns. Um, the, one, the one benefit of using robot templates in, in this particular workflow is you're already using other robot commands and it fits really well into the robot ecosystem so that you can link these commands together. Um, but, but yeah, both, both of them generate ontology axioms from design patterns. You can use them to, to add logic or annotations just in, in slightly different ways. Right. No, I understand. I was just wondering if you guys had a had a workflow that integrated to two or not. Um, so yeah, not 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 currently, but but that that would be that would be something to to work on in the future, definitely. I think I think that's a that's a great idea. Okay. Uh, so Kim from Trials.ai is asking. I'm curious to hear opinions on which scenarios are appropriate for which extract method. Um, Myriads. SLME, STAR, et cetera. Um, what use cases are different types of appropriate for? Yeah, so it really depends on what you need for your ontology. Um, like I said in the presentation, for ECO, we really want those logical, uh, that logic from OB. So we want to use the reasoner um, to infer things, and therefore we needed the logic from OB. And that's why we chose the SLME method for, for that case. But one of the, the downsides of the SLME method is it pulls in everything that's needed for that logic. So you end up with way more terms than your original uh, like input term file. So if you're importing a lot of terms um, and you don't necessarily need all of that logic, you can end up with a really big import file. So in that case, using something like Marriott um, would be better, where you're just including the class hierarchy, so all of the, all of the superclasses and the annotations. So you end up with something a little bit more simple, a little bit smaller. So it, it really depends on what you're using the the import terms for. Um, but but it, it's it's kind of a trade off, right? It's it's size versus having more logic and the ability to use the reasoner and really harness the logic in the, in the ontology. So, so for an ontology that doesn't have a ton of, a ton of logic in it, it wouldn't really make sense to use SLME. Right. And we previously also talked about, you know, how the, there's this need um, to sometimes map these logical descriptions. And then sometimes there are, um, instances where people don't really want to um, use the logical descriptions because they don't really agree with the actual logical description but they they want to have a, a nuance in there for their own application or for yeah their own yeah cer own. certainly right um so there's some some other uh, comments about uh, dos cps and robot inside of this but i kind of want to ask you What's the usability difference? Um, do you see people are getting, um, you know, because yesterday we, we talked a little bit about also the need for cloning Nico and uh, we- <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, I, that, there is definitely a need, need for that. <laughs> no need for that, right. I think that, um, you know, um, um, there, uh, this table like um, the presentation is, um, very much aligned with how um, many domain experts in biomedical fields work. Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, what's the learning curve do you see? Yeah, uh, so the learning curve for robot, if, if you've never used a command line, it can be a little bit steep um, learning to use the command line. But for using robot templates, we really wanted to go for something that domain experts could use. And domain experts are so familiar with using spreadsheets already. Um, that, it, that it's really easy for them to fill out these templates. And if they're included in an, uh, in an automated workflow like this, then the domain experts don't really have to touch the command line. Um, they can fill out the templates and just send it to the developers, which 
then the template can be plugged into to this existing workflow. So, so our goal with the templates is, is to, to kind of eliminate that learning curve and give, give domain experts a chance to contribute to ontologies without having to, to know how to do all the command line stuff. Um, that that said, if you're using robot on the command line, you, you know you, you have to you have to know a little bit about the command line environment. Uh, and, and there are so many robot commands; it can take a little bit to to kind of learn the the documentation and whatnot. Um, but but we we hope to make it as easy as possible <laughs> for for everybody to use it. Yeah, no, I understand. But you know, when you're also using robot, you kind of need to be in that ontology um, community in a way. Sometimes I think, mm -hmm. because, you know, you're you're kind of getting into that um, to communicate that template with the developers and the ontology owners. So there's that kind of also an extra step in there. Yeah, yeah. And the nice thing about the templates is you can just hide those template strings from from the domain experts, from the people who, who aren't necessarily well versed in ontology. And you can kind of look at it and, and be like, oh, okay, so this is just the term, this is the label, um, and this is, you know, the, the study design for this term. Um, then they can think they can think in those terms rather than thinking in Manchester class expressions. Right. Right. No, I hear you. All right. Well, thank you very much, Becky. There's already some uh, demand for training sessions uh, in the chat. 